video, I'm going to be talking about a Ferris wheel problem using circular motion. We're going to take a look at a person at the top of the ride and the person at the bottom of the ride. And we have a Ferris wheel that has a 15 meter radius, a period of 20 seconds, which means it takes 20 seconds to complete that full circle. And we're going to find the apparent weight at the top and the bottom, which is basically the normal force that they experience. Now, if you're taking a look at the force diagram, for each of the two people, we have a force of gravity and a normal force. Now, let's just take a look at the person at the top. We have a force of gravity that's pointing towards the center of the circle, which is in the centripetal direction. Now, anything that's moving in a circular type motion has a net force that is centripetal, which means that it's pointing at the center of the circle. So because that increases the rate that something moves around a circle, this is gonna be considered positive and anything pointing away from the center of the circle would be considered negative. Now, if we did the same thing over here, we would still have a force of gravity down and a normal force upwards. But then now our normal force is pointing towards the center of the circle, so it becomes positive. And then our force of gravity is pointing away from the center of the circle, so that becomes negative. So let's go ahead and just take a look at one of these positions first. So let's just focus on the top of the Ferris wheel first. We're gonna take a look at the sum of the forces and you take a look at the sum of the forces in the direction of radial in and radial out, as in radial in is pointing towards the center of the circle and then radial out is pointing towards um, away from the center of the circle. So we have the force of gravity as our positive centripetal driving force and then we have the normal force going away from the center of the circle and that would normally equal mass times acceleration, but centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So it's mv squared over r. Now, if we wanted to find the apparent weight that it's a normal force, that's how heavy the passenger feels, we can go ahead and do a few calculations. We can go ahead and find the fg first. So let's go ahead and say that our person is 50 kilograms. Then we would do mass times 9.8 to get the value of fg minus fn which is our unknown we have a mass of 50 of v squared that's unknown and a radius of 15 meters now if you're doing a uniform circular motion problem and you don't have a velocity what you're going to want to try to do is you want to try to use the formula velocity equals 2 pi r over t which basically is the circular motion version of distance over time the distance is 2 pi r which is the circumference of the circle and then capital t is the period the amount of time it takes to complete that circle so it looks like we do have those two values so we can go ahead and say that it's 2 pi times 15 divided by 20 and that gives us a velocity of 4.71 meters per second So we can go ahead and place that into this formula for our V, square it, multiply it by 50, and divide it by 15. And then we have a value of uh, 73.95 Newtons. Let's go ahead and fix this seven. Okay, we have 50 times 9.8, which is 490 Newtons minus the normal force. So if we go ahead and subtract 73.95 from both sides, and add the normal force, then we're gonna end up with the normal force over here and a final answer of 416.05 Newtons. Now, if we're looking at the bottom, 
it's going to look very similar. We still are going to have a setup that looks really, really similar to this, but our centripetal force is the normal force. That's the one that's pointing towards the center of the circle. So Fn is going to become positive and Fg is pointing away from the center of the circle. So that's going to become negative. And that equals mv squared over r. Now this becomes pretty simple after solving for all the values we've have already because we know that fg is 490 newtons. We know that mv squared over r is 73.95. So we can just go ahead and add 490 to both sides and we are done. So in each of these pictures, uh, I did this purposely, I didn't mention it yet, but my centripetal force, my one that is um, center seeking, to pointing towards the center of the circle is slightly larger than the one that's pointing away from the center of the circle. If it wasn't slightly larger, then it wouldn't be moving in a circular motion. So we have two normal forces, which are the apparent weight, how heavy the passenger feels. Now, if you take a look at this over here, we'll say that they're moving around clockwise. If the passenger is moving down because of their inertia and their tendency to keep on moving downward, they're going to press into their seat a little bit more, which is going to cause that normal force to increase. But the force of gravity is going to stay the same because their mass is consistent. And then when they move upwards, they're going to have the inertia moving upwards and they're going to sort of pop out of their seat a little bit and then make the FN work a little bit less the seat won't have to push up quite as hard. So then that Fn is going to shrink and the Fg is going to be slightly larger at the top. Um, and that leads us with two apparent weights. The smaller one at the top where you're going to feel a little bit lighter if you're popping out of your seat a little bit. And then you have the larger number on the bottom because you're kind of sinking into the seat and then feeling a little bit more force and pressure in that case. Um, and then the final piece of advice I have is if you're working out a roller coaster question, it's going to be the same setup in the bottom, exactly the same, except when you flip around on a roller coaster, you're actually upside down. So your, uh, your seat is facing down. So the normal force is going to be facing downward. So if you were to solve for that, you would say that the Fn plus Fg equals mv squared over r because the force of gravity and the seat that you're sitting in are both pointing towards the center of the circle. They are both positive and they would equal your mass times your centripetal acceleration. So I hope that was helpful in helping you solve a Ferris wheel problem and the apparent weights at the top and bottom. Thank you for watching and listening.